Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you several secrets you may or may not already know in the Awakened King DLC. Feel free to let me know if there's any I may have missed and also check out my channel for other guides. First, I'll be showing you how to get the Meat Shake. It's a concoction that increases damage reduction by 8% with the Awakened King DLC. First, make sure you talk to the royal scribe Le Wise in the beginning of the Forlorn Coast. Then make your way to the palace of the one true king. You will need the great hall tile set in order to complete this. Check the dungeons in and under the palace of the one true king to see. There's only two places for the chance of it to spawn in. Otherwise you will have to reroll. When you do have the great hall, explore and retrieve the ravenous medallion on the upper floor. Then head back and open the door to the feast room. Talk to the feast master and ask him about what happened to the one true king. He will then mention Le Wise. Let the feast master know you know him. He will then give you the leftover for Le Wise. Now instead of taking it back to Le Wise, you want to head back to the ward and give it to Duan when he gets to the pot. Wait around 45 minutes to an hour till he says something along the lines of any minute now as seen here. Anyway, I was wondering. Where did you find that meat? It had a very, uh, unique flavor to it. And I've tasted all kinds of meats in my day. Then I'll once you, you right acquire now, the meat shake, you can then purchase it anytime from Mudtooth. Did you know that you can speak to the warden? Yep, I think the vast majority of the time I shot this man on sight, but on the one run I was mostly running through everything to get where I was going, I decided not this time and see what happens. In order to do this, you don't need to wear any specific gear, just don't kill any of the enemies on your way up to the warden. There is a big furnace in the back of the room, you can't miss it, full of Fay and Dran killing each other. Run past it from here until you reach the bridge and he'll talk to you. Find him in the castle. Go should you encounter my depraved, blood-hungered flesh. Use this boon. For the Bridge Warden Crest, Perfect Dodges increase melee damage by 15% for 7 seconds, and Perfect Evade Flops also gains 10% damage reduction for the duration. Okay, so this one isn't really a secret, but you can buy the Steel Scythe from Bear Abyss. Part of the Awakened King DLC, there are more mutators you can find. There are two you can craft with Dwell, Feeded Wounds, and Tainted Blade. There are also other ones that can be found in the DLC as well here. Now for the Sparkfire Shotgun and the Lighthouse Keeper Ring, you'll need the Derelict Lighthouse Tile Set. In order to get this, you'll need to progress past the area with the boats. When you get to the next red stone, hug right going down to the sewer. Check that dungeon there. I don't believe you can get the lighthouse to spawn in the dungeon right next to Le Wise, but let me know if you have. If you get the Derelict Lighthouse Tile Set, you can find the Lighthouse Key after killing Thunder Piercer and Gore Carver Aberrations. The key should go to your inventory automatically when you defeat the Chainsaw Guy. Just follow the path here after you've reached the second red stone. Then make your way to the Lighthouse, but you want to head to the bottom basement area first, as going up and using the key will disappear from your inventory. Now head down for the Spark Fire Shotgun. This is also the starting class weapon for the Ritualist Archetype. Now make your way through the building till you run into the second door. Flip the key and use it to unlock the door. Outside on your left, you'll find a small room with a lighthouse keeper ring on a table. This automatically generates three mod power per second for each entity within 10 meters, experiencing a negative status effect with a maximum of five stacks. There's also a new trait that you can unlock called the dark trait pack. All you have to do is ring the dinner bell. Shoot all three bells hidden throughout the Forlorn Coast, which will spawn either Dran or Fae enemies you'll have to defeat. However, keep in mind you won't be able to talk to the Bridge Warden if you choose to do this. It will have to be on another roll or someone else's playthrough. 
The first bell is after progressing through the first main door with the exclamation mark leading to the other side of the forlorn coast. The second bell progressed till you reached the mournful promenade redstone heading towards the palace of the one true king. After jumping across to a green rooftop, the bell will be located here with a few pig enemies and a big red guy. From the second location, continue making your way to the palace. From this redstone, just follow this on-screen path. Once you exit, take a right for the final bell and kill the enemies there for the trait. Do you remember how the first time here, near the beginning of the Four Lone Coast, how this guy turns hostile? If you have the zealot set, on your second or reroll in adventure, you can get the ban of Fanatic Ring after listening to his speech and talking to him. After going through the first main exclamation mark door, you'll end up on the other side of the forlorn coast. Shoot all the pig enemies you see for the digested hog lure ring. Reloading increases mod damage by 10% for 5 seconds. Follow the path and take the ladder down the well. There will be two manticore enemies you can fight with the abyssal hook melee weapon nearby. If it isn't your first time, it is still worth doing so as it upgrades it up by a level. If it isn't your one-shot playthrough, after a reroll, there's a chance in adventure mode that you may come across the Path of the Fallen, an outside fey area with a garden maze and a locked door ahead. There's no visible map for the maze, which isn't a problem since it's easy to navigate, but be careful of enemies in ambush. After reaching the outside where there's a waterfall, you'll face a wraith liege. When you defeat him, he'll drop the Prophecy Mutator, and most importantly, the Memoriam Medallion Key. But before using this medallion, you have two choices. For Path of the Fallen, it is the Gift of Melicogni. This amulet increases all damage dealt by 25% when stamina is at 100% for 7 seconds. Now for Walk of Remembrance, you'll get the Gift of Euphoria, an amulet that when spending 25 stamina grants 5% critical chance for 7 seconds and is stackable up to 5 times, as well an additional reward if you enter the building to the right from where you face the Wraith Liege. Look for a large suspicious painting on the left wall, shoot it and it will reveal a secret passage. Head inside and climb the stairs to find a strange magical mirror. Interacting with this mirror will transport you to an alternate version of the same location called the Walk of Remembrance, granting access to the other half of the garden. Make your way through till you get to the door to use the medallion. If you wear the crown of the Red Prince, a hidden passage will reveal itself in the Walk of Remembrance. Inside you can obtain the creature cremated soul ash material, allowing you to craft the night guard weapon mod with McCabe back at Ward 13. Miss, that's right before the one true king. Before you go and talk to him, remember the three council members from the base game that is now dead by their chairs? Just shoot each of their dead bodies and you'll get the cost of betrayal amulet. This reduces max relic charges to one and increase all damage by 20% when the wearer has one relic charge and increases incoming damage by 20% when the wearer has no relic charges and after 30 seconds regains one charge. During your time in Losum, you may come across a room like this, found in either the Gilded Chambers, Pathway of the Fallen, or the Glistening Cloister. Look for the reflection of the golden vase and shoot where it should be to obtain the Shade Stone. This increases skill damage by 12%. Now, if you found any of this helpful at all, be sure to share it, drop a like, and leave a comment. It helps me out tremendously. Consider subscribing as well if you haven't already, as I have many other guides on the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and take care.